Today I'd like to talk about VR streaming with Paradrop. This project relies on a couple key principles. The first is that a lot of VR video that users wish to consume is stored in the cloud. So you can see on the left here we have this cloud bubble that's the VR video that we want to watch. Um, now the problem with watching VR video on the cloud is that the kind of uh, standard way of doing this is that the entire VR video is sent to user's headset, which is on the right side. And uh, the issue with that is that the user only looks at about uh, 90 degrees, has only a 90 degree field of view that they look at when they are watching the video. And so uh, that's a huge like bandwidth waste, right? Like you don't need to send the whole 360 video, um, you can send just part of it. But the problem with sending just part of it is you need to be able to ask the cloud uh, which part you want to see in a very low latency way. Um, and basically if you did this with standard cloud there'd be lag and you kind of you know, wouldn't always have your full view updated. You might turn your head really fast and you'd see a black, you know, missing spot. But we'll talk about splitting it up and kind of that stuff a little bit in the next slide. Um, but the basic idea is that we're going to use this Paradrop router, which is an edge device, basically a um, computer that's located, it's actually located in the router on your wireless network. And so what the router does to kind of, uh, you know, sand, save bandwidth over the wireless link is it will download the video from the cloud and it will split the video up into, um, basically eight different tiles. So the sphere will be broken into eight different tiles and then it will break those tiles up into time chunks. So half second chunks that the headset can download. So basically if the user is looking at one tile, the, the Paradrop router will send half second chunks of the tile that the user is looking at. And um, it can do that in a really low latency way because it doesn't have to go over the internet, it's just located at the router. Um, and so that ends up saving a lot of bandwidth. And as you can see here, so this kind of connection here is over the internet, and it's really low, it's really high latency, but it's really fast, right? So we can download an entire VR video, no problem. And then uh, this link is not as fast, the bandwidth isn't as high because it's wireless, uh, but it's really low latency because the this is basically the fastest communication you can get on a wireless network is between the router and the end device. Um, and so this is kind of the, the general... Um, working schematic of our VR streaming solution with Paradrop. So uh, let me talk about this bandwidth savings a little more. So as you can see on the right, this is kind of two representations of VR video that we can watch. So VR video is actually streamed as a rectangle so that we can use kind of, you know, normal video encoding and all the normal video stuff that uh, people are really good at using now. So uh, the video is streamed as a uh, square and then we wrap that square around a sphere at the end to actually show the VR video to the users. And so the actual video can kind of be thought of as more of a sphere than a rectangle since we're actually going to be looking at the video played on a sphere. So if you imagine this is the sphere of the VR video and at the center of the sphere there will be a person watching the video. So um, basically when you move your head around the uh, phone that you're using for a headset will show you different uh, like views on the sphere of the video uh, and so that's like gives you the appearance of looking around in VR and so if you look at this like when you're watching a VR video you can only see about 90 degrees of this field of view so that's like you know one of these little chunks one of these eighths of the sphere so really we only need to stream about an eighth of the sphere to the user we don't need to stream the whole thing and so um, that can give us a lot of bandwidth savings and the advantage to that is that um, you know, if we're only streaming one of these, that's like 88% bandwidth savings. Now, unfortunately, if we kind of break up tiles in this way, uh, you know, the user could be looking at the intersection of these four tiles, and then we have to stream all four, but that's still a 50% bandwidth savings, right? So literally, we're using half of the amount of bandwidth that we did in the previous case where we streamed the whole sphere. Um, and what this really enables is uh, multiple people to watch VR videos on a a wireless access point at the same time. So before maybe we could get five, maybe ten if we're really lucky, uh, users watching VR at the same time, and now we can get like 10 to 20 users watching it instead. Uh, and that's really powerful because if you can get up to like 15, 20 users, that's becoming a classroom size, right? So we could have a, an entire classroom of students watching VR uh, instead of just the couple that were able to watch it before. And so um, you know, obviously using VR for classrooms is great because uh, you can take advantage of this like multi-modality learning that people have been talking about, right? Like instead of uh, just having students sit and watch a video, 
Uh, they can sit and watch a video in VR, which kind of makes them feel like they're actually in the location where the video is filmed. And then they can do experiences in VR that they wouldn't be able to do in real life, or that they would be able to do, but it would be too expensive for the class. So um, we'll go. We'll, I'll show you a couple examples of this that's, that are really cool um, in the next slide here. So. So we basically went over two example implementations of um, our VR streaming with Paradrop. The first is an electronics factory tour. So uh, I actually went to a factory and had their manufacturing engineer explain the process of how to make a print circuit board. And uh, you know that's really cool because this engineer is a really busy guy. The company pays him a lot, so he doesn't want to give tours to students, you know, every semester or something like that. But he's willing to give one tour to us, and then we record it in VR, so uh, people can watch the tour. And it's pretty cool because they can see, you know, how a circuit board's made, and it really seems like the engineer is talking just to them at the factory, um, which is really sweet. And then uh, the other thing that's cool is that students can do hands-on tasks in VR. So. Uh, for this tour, we basically um, we had this fake circuit board on the bottom here, and this was in VR, and the students could kind of work together and um, put the you know different components on and do all the stuff they needed to do to turn this little green virtual bare board into a real circuit board. And that's great because that really solidifies their learning because instead of just watching some guy talk, they're watching the guy talk and then they're working together to build an actual board, right? So some students learn with hands-on stuff and obviously you can't have students like you know, all go to an electronics factory and build boards themselves. So uh, VR is the next best thing. And then, of course, they don't have to pay for the people to actually be trans tra transported to the location and all that. And that's pretty great. Um, the second example imp implementation we did was how to fly a drone. So um, the kind of feedback I got with the electronics factory tours, I'm an engineer, so I think that stuff's cool. But uh, most students think that stuff's kind of boring. So, uh, you know, they, they don't want to don't want to do that. So um, we made another video of how to fly a drone. And again, that was two parts. There is a uh, video part. So we made a VR video of how to fly a drone and just kind of, you know, showed a drone flying and ex explained to the students how to fly. It. And then uh, the next part is they basically all fly the drones together um, and they can kind of see each other flying around and, and that kind of adds to the excitement of it, right? And uh, of course, there's no risk of actually damaging drones, which are pretty expensive. So uh, the students get to learn how to fly a drone and kind of practice with them without the risk of, you know, damaging the drone. And so uh, we'll just show you a quick demo of um, one of our, our colleagues just learning to fly a drone. As you can see, Bojao gets to experience uh, flying a drone in VR. Uh, this is really cool because he can practice flying and all that stuff without the risk of actually damaging a drone and spending a lot of money. Um, you can see he can see uh, the drone like he normally would if he was flying it, and then he can also switch to the drone's view itself, so he can practice his cinematography skills. You can see here as the, as the uh, camera pans down to see a fountain in the middle of this building. 